Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our backyard. Fall is a great time to assess your garden, to look at it from all the perspectives of the different seasons, and take a look and see what did well and what you're really happy with and what didn't perform as well as you expected. My name is Crystal and I garden south of Houston along the Texas Gulf Coast and we have a very hot and humid climate. Typically we can get a lot of rain, especially at one time, and we have heavy clay soil. We had been in zone 9A for years and we got reclassified to zone 9B. But what's been interesting about us is we have had a polar vortex come down over the last three seasons and have a very hard freeze for us. And that hard freeze didn't last very long, anywhere from a, um, one to three days, but it was enough to really hurt plants that don't do well in cold weather. And so, We've had, you know, a little bit different, different growing conditions the last few years. And then last year we had a very difficult summer and a lot of the plants struggled because not only did we have high heat and high humidity, but the heat indexes were in the upper 100 teens to the 120s. And it was really, really difficult. So this year was a much better year for us, growing wise in the garden. And it's just nice to take a, a few minutes to think about, okay, what did well? And start to plan for next season. In a recent video, I did a um, a synopsis of some of the plants that have been performing so well in our fall garden. And what you see here is a fire bush. And I'm going to link that video up at top. This video is a little bit different. This video, I want to share with you some of the things that I want to plan for next year and don't really have a great plan yet for them. And the first one I want to talk about are pentas. Pantas do so well down here and they're in a little bit of a blooming lull because this is right by my fence and they're not getting a lot of sun now because of the shade that is cast. But I want to figure out how to put more pentas in my garden because they are such a wonderful performer here in along the Texas Gulf Coast. So this year I've kind of taken them for granted unintentionally and I found that I didn't have any pentas in my garden. This one came up towards the end here from last year. I had this color last year in the garden and so it, we had frozen and it took all this time for it to come up from the roots which I'm surprised to see. But they do so beautifully in our garden. I need to figure out a way to get more pentas in. So the other thing that I've come to realize, and I think I've shared with you before, is butterfly bushes do not do well here. This is my Miss Molly butterfly bush. And Miss Molly does not like our heat and humidity of the summer. Butterfly bushes just do not do well. This one happens to be blue chip and this is from the Lo and Behold series, and I don't think Proven Winners is, is selling this anymore. And this is, I think, only one of two that I still have remaining. I have tried over 10 butterfly bushes in my garden, and I've had them in the soil, which they drowned out. They do not like wet feet. They like well-draining soil. And so, 
I have even put butterfly bushes in containers because butterflies do appreciate the nectar from butterfly bushes. But I have found that they, it's such a struggle to try to grow them here. And so I will not be purchasing another butterfly bush to try to grow in hot, humid weather in heavy clay soil. Unfortunately. Another thing that I think about is what I want to plant that are vines along my trellises. And as you can see here, look at this. This is the reason I plant this vine is because the cardinal climber profusely blooms from about late August until a late fall, early winter and it's just gorgeous. I do plant it from seed and the hummingbirds and butterflies love this vine. And so I am a huge proponent of this vine down here. If you are looking to have a trellis or put it in a container that has something it can grow up on, it is just such a wonderful performer and it's really low cost. I do collect my own seeds. I am going to put up at the top of this screen a playlist that I have on this Cardinal Climber. It's inexpensive and it performs so well for us. It does need water. It is the cross between a red cypress vine and a red morning glory and so it is does require um, does require water I am a fan of this and the reason is because of everything that it pulls into the yard so Tithonia or Mexican sunflower is a flower that I absolutely love having in my garden because of the butterflies and how they are attracted to it I thought I had the perfect spot for it here on the edge of my new garden bed. And what I found is we had a hurricane come through which flattened it. And then I had some reseeding done. And lo and behold, squirrels absolutely love to come and eat not only the flowers, but the seed heads off. And so I have pest pressure in the ter in terms of squirrels and they try to climb the stalks. <laughs> I've seen them out here trying to climb these stalks to get at the seed heads, which is crazy. I never saw this last year. And so Oh, well, I love having this in the garden. I don't like what it looks like when it's a mess. So I have to figure something out for Tithonia. So Tithonia gets very large for us. That's probably easily seven feet tall. And so it grows and grows and grows. But those of you that do grow Tithonia, if you have any suggestions, I would be interested because I'm having, I, I want it, ugh, but I have this love-hate relationship, I guess, with it. Here's a vine that I absolutely adore in the spring. It is covered in these gorgeous blooms. Let me get a little closer. This is the Mexican flame vine and I love that it attracts butterflies and it does. All kinds of butterflies love the Mexican flame vine, which of course then I love. As a butterfly hummingbird and pollinator gardener, I'm always looking for plants that do well here in the high heat and humidity and are pollinator attractors. But unfortunately, Mexican flame vine has not, in the last couple of years, performed for me all summer long. It grows beautifully. It's a beautiful vine. It 
fills out just this is one season I purchased this in the early spring and I do have it trellised in the pot and it just grows beautifully but I don't know if I'm a fan of just having it flower in the spring and the fall so in my planning I'm gonna have to think about this because I do love how it looks I do love how it looks in the yard and in the summer even though it's just this beautiful vine uh, it's not flowering I can tell you I have determined next to it which is my canna lilies that I tried this year for the first time I am not a fan of the type that I grew and they had very small blooms, not the pretty showy blooms. And I probably will not be growing cannas next year. They really did have a lot of pest pressure from the Brazilian skipper that uses it. It's a leaf roller and it does use this as a host plant. But I just didn't care for the blooms. And so canna lilies are probably not on my list for next year. This is a vine I absolutely love. You can see a Gulf Fritillary caterpillar on my passion vine here. But I will always have passion vine on my trellis system. It is just thick and gorgeous and beautiful and it is purely for the Gulf Fritillary and I always have Gulf Fritillaries in our garden because of this vine but next to it I have something that I have wanted for a long time and this is Hot Lips Salvia this one happens to be just a red it doesn't have the white tip on it but I'm not a huge fan of the growth and what hot lips looks like. I don't like this. I don't care for how this looks. It doesn't have, I don't think, nice foliage. I love the scent of the foliage. So those of you that grow hot lips, I'm curious. Do you cut this heavily back um, early summer? What do you do with your hot lips? Because I don't like what this growing habit looks like. I don't, I just think it's messy and I don't like all this dead woody, or it looks dead, I know it's not, but all this woody, woody stems. I just, I don't care for that. So I'm curious, those of you that grow hot lips down here in the South, do you have better luck with it than I do? Oof. And it doesn't flower as profusely as a lot of my other salvias. I'm going to put at the top the uh, video that I did on salvia in our springtime. And you can see all the different types of salvia I have in the garden. I love salvia. It's such a wonderful performer. Hot lips, not so much. So if you follow my channel, you know that I am a huge porterweed fan. Look at this. This porter weed is gorgeous. And it is covered with pollinators from hummingbirds to butterflies to bees all day long. And next to it, I have volunteer blue porter weed. Interestingly enough, I have this blue porter weed was a volunteer. And it has overtaken, along with the Tithonia, which was a volunteer from last year. And I have one purple porter weed here that came up as a volunteer, which tickled me. That's the first color porter weed that has been a volunteer. But it's taken over my bed. And so I let it grow. I wanted to have a learning. What's this going to do? What's it going to look like? It performs beautifully it flowers beautifully but in here it's overtaken some plants so I need to figure out because if you look at this I have 
some John Fanuc phlox that has been blooming gorgeously all summer long. It's a Texas superstar. It's a panicle type phlox that grows for us in the heat and humidity and sun, full sun, but now it's being overtaken. And so it's multiplied and I need to figure out what to do and do differently with this beautiful phlox. I probably need to divide it and plant it in another area of my garden that isn't going to get overwhelmed like this. So this was a learning for me. Um, and I've learned a lot with this phlox also. I absolutely love it. I'm going to put at the top of the screen um, a, a video that I did about the John Fanuc phlox. But look at this. We're towards the end of October and these panicles are just still performing and beautiful. Although you can't see them because they're <laughs> overtaken by the beautiful blue porterweed. So my advice is to start planning now for your garden for next year. What do you want to continue to have in your garden? What would you like to plant new? If you order seeds, do that now because seeds can go pretty quickly and then you don't get what you want. What you see here is Lantana. Lantana does so well for us. And it is a huge pollinator attractor. I always think, oh, plants that do well that you find that you absolutely love, you feel like you need more of in your garden. <laughs> and you run out of space. It's also good to understand yourself as a gardener. I have learned that I do not like plants that only perform one or two months out of the year. Because I am a pollinator gardener, that typically does not do well for me. And so know yourself. And now that I do know that about me, I try to get plants that perform well over many months because we have such a long growing season. What you're looking at here is the beautiful Salvia madrensis, the yellow colored bloom spikes. And even though this is a fall performer, it looks beautiful and the foliage looks beautiful all summer long, but this is when it shines. So I don't mind plants like that. But I also don't like plants that don't perform to how they're advertised. And so part of that is location, part of that is our growing conditions. But once you learn that, it's important to make notes of it so you don't end up purchasing those plants again. <laughs> and you want to be successful in your garden and so plant what works in your area that also meets your needs. This ground cover you've heard me talk about and I love it because it pops back up quickly after the caterpillars have eaten it down to nubs and it'll pop back up within a week. And I have had black swallowtail caterpillars and black swallowtail butterflies in my garden all year round except for when it freezes and so think about what works for you and what you like and start planning for that for next year one of the things that you know about my garden if you follow my channel is I had a beautiful stand of fennel here and I was so disappointed because I lost it all in a watering clogging problem and I was so bummed because this is a staple in this north garden bed for me and it hosts the eastern black swallowtail caterpillar and so what I did is I purchased more fennel I found it at the garden center 
my favorite nursery in the Houston area and I planted it this fall. So I'm hoping that it will root in and I will have much better luck with this now that I know about my <laughs> watering issue. And let me show you what we did. We purchased a filter that filters sediment before it comes into our drip irrigation. And so far that has been working very well. Because I don't want to lose plants again and we realized we had a problem when it was too late. I do realize fennel is a perennial that doesn't last super long. What is, I think it's like two, three, four years max that you're going to get out of it. But it also recedes and I just had total collapse of my fennel. The reason I am planting it in the fall is because if I did this in the spring, I really probably would not have enough fennel for all the butterflies that come and lay eggs and all the caterpillars that this sustains. So in that planning, I'm trying to plant and think strategically about next year. When is the best time to plant these plants? Is it in the fall? Is it in the early spring, etc. So this is a plant I want in my yard all the time and I'm tr trying to do <laughs> the best to maximize what it's going to look like for next spring. So what do you all do for your planning? Pop it in the comment below. I'd be curious for what your strategies are. Well, thanks for joining me today. It's a beautiful day. I think we're supposed to get up to be 88 degrees. We've not really cooled down yet. In fact, I've looked at the two week forecast and I don't think we're gonna get into the 70s during the day until November. This is just a beautiful growing time for us in the gardens. It's also a time when we can be a little bit burnt out because of our long summers. But even if you can't get out in your gardens yet, it's fun to plan. It's fun to plan for next year. What would you like to keep? What would you like to remove? what worked, what didn't. As you can see here, I have this beautiful dwarf porterweed. I've talked about that it's not a dwarf. And it has started to overtake my other plants. Goodness, this thing was maybe, maybe six inches tall. It was a tiny thing. And it is planted in the ground and over five and a half feet tall with the bloom spikes. It's been so successful. Well, thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you again soon.